what has to happen for Manny to win and then what has to happen for Tony to win? Well, I think for Manny Sobral, I believe he may have a be some better skill than, than Tony Badia. I think what Manny is going to have to do is increase the skill factor, decrease the luck factor, and, and uh, fight fight really hard when Tony Badia wants to box. When Tony Badia wants to box, go ahead and fight. So switch it up like that, and Badia is really going to have to, I think, amount a, a very credible offense, hopefully to, to turn the heat up on on, on Sobro for any chance in, in this fight. Uh, it's going to be an interesting goal. So tempo is a big part of this fight. Yeah, tempo has a lot to do with it. It's going to be who sustains the, the momentum for a, a duration, for a duration of time, several rounds at a time. And, uh, you know, it, it's up in the air, completely up in the air. What a great, great match. We see it, we've heard it said, that this is the boxer against the puncher. Is that too simple? I think it's, what a wonderful fight this is because, John, what you have here is you have two attractions and you have close odds. That's what you need for not only a boxing fight, but an event. This has become an event, John. And the music says that we're headed to an event. Tony Padilla in the ring, bouncing around. Manny Sobral is getting all kinds of volume as he comes in. Scott, does this help a fighter? I don't think it, it uh, really helps or, or hinders any fighter. I think sometimes the music, music can be a, a big pickup for a fighter at times, and it can be used uh, as a benefit. But I don't think uh, you know having a fighter wait in the ring for, for any length of time, I don't think psychologically it does anything. Does it cool you out a little bit if you've been working hard to get ready in the ring? Uh, no, not if you're a smart fighter and have a smart trainer with you. Like Tony Badia is waiting a little bit for, for Manny Sobro, but with Jerome Coffey, such a great trainer, and Tony's a smart fighter, he's still bouncing, staying warm, and staying prepared so that when Manny Sobral does come in the ring, he won't have cooled off. You heard the records. Uh, they're on the screen for you, ladies and gentlemen. Manny Sobro, 23 wins, no losses. Tony Badia, 18 wins, one loss, one draw. Sobral is 29 and Badia is 23. Does that make any difference, the age? I think it's uh, pretty darn comparable. I don't see any problem in, in, in their ages. I think uh, um, many, I think his experience in the amateur in the amateur days is a little bit more extensive than, than Tony Badia's. I don't think their age will be a factor at all in this fight. Tony, Tony however, was also a credible amateur. Uh, Manny fought several times internationally for Canada and defeated some of the great amateurs at his weight class. But uh, uh, Tony Badia was uh, a member of the Romanian national junior team, and he was an outstanding amateur, too. Oh, thank you for enlightening there, me there, John. I wasn't quite aware of that, but that's a little bit of uh, insight that, that you boxing people know. <laughs> you that, see, you are a lot better than you. You're, you're a, hell of a, a hell of a commentator, that's for sure. And I want to know this, too. Uh, Jerome Coffey has worked with you. Your style and Tony Badia's style not necessarily the same. You've got the short arms, and you have to walk forward to be aggressive, to be effective. Uh, can Jerome Coffey, as the trainer, teach both styles? Can he be as effective with Tony Badia as he was with you? Uh, possibly even more so. He's, he's, Jerome Coffey, as a fighter, never really fought much on the inside, but he's able to teach me how to fight on the inside in box. And with Tony Badia, he can teach Tony Badia how to do what Jerome did best, and that's box. Box and go ahead and... Uh, uh, set himself in the position for some hard punches. And uh, the question of durability comes into it. Uh, Badia's only loss, he was stopped here by Fitz Vanderpool, and he rather obviously ran out of gas in several fights. Rounds uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, or 8, 9, 10, have been uh, difficult ones for Tony Badia. How does a, a fighter overcome that? Well, he's, I think mentally it may play a, a, a bit of a factor, but uh, I know Tony Padilla has gone through a tremendous training program with Jerome Coffey. I honestly feel um, that these rounds, both, both fighters are in tremendous condition. I don't believe that any fighter in this fight, with the kind of intensity and the focus placed on, on such a match, both fighters have come to fight, and you know they, they'll fight till there are no more bells, and I don't really believe that either one will be uh, um, hindered in any way as a result of their conditioning. Does, the, does either fighter have to take control right out of the way. You heard uh, Manny Sobral say that uh, he's going to 
do whatever is necessary. He, he says it's not necessary that I take control, but if the chance comes early, I'm going to take it. Does Badia have to come out and uh, declare some territory? I think it's very important for both fighters to establish control of the fight, whether it's on the outside or the inside. Um, you know, they're going to have to go ahead and, and try to establish something fairly quick and try to maintain that throughout the fight. And what wonderful thing is going to happen with this fight, I feel this fight will seesaw, it'll go back and forth a little bit, and it'll make for a wonderful, wonderful fight for the fight fans to see, and it'll be a tremendous fight for both of their careers. We get a chance to watch them put the, the gloves on in the ring, and once again, for those who believe that this uh, cools a fighter out. You've had, to, had it done that way. Does that make any difference? Uh, it sure does. I think it, it breaks up your, your momentum a little bit. You've just gotten warmed up for your fights. Uh, you're all warmed up, ready to go. You get into the ring, you're all pumped up. Well, then you have to get your, your gloves on. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's a, a really a detriment. I don't see that as being a, a good rule at all. It's not nothing that should really be enforced in Edmonton, and I'm sure that Edmonton will soon, uh, if, if not immediately after the fight, this fight, go ahead and put the gloves on inside the dressing room. The interesting thing, I talked to Nelson Kitchen, who is the, the corner man, of course, for Sobral. I talk often with Jerome Coffey, and they're as confident as any trainer has ever been in this fight, each of them. Both of them, both carry, both camps create, have tremendous confidence in this, in this match. President, the official supervisor is Jack Chris, chairman of the CPBF Championships Committee. The referee for the match, Mr. Don Smart, and the judges are Ken Rudd, Billy Warwick, and Ken Newman. The timekeeper is Bob Blacklock, and the knockdown timekeeper is Ed Pearson. The scoring will be done on a 10-point system. Batten down the hatches. It's time for a little thunder. In the red corner, the IBO Intercontinental Champion and never say die, world championship potential, with a record of 15, one and one, 11 by knockout, Tony, a bad boy, Badia. In the blue corner, 1988 Olympian defeated the reigning world amateur welterweight, Canadian junior middleweight champion. He has never lost with a record of 23 and 0. Ladies and gentlemen, Manny, the teacher, Fobo. Scott Olson, I feel a little bit the way I felt before some of your fights. I get really nervous, too. <laughs> what anticipation. What a tremendous event. Hats off to Jerry Gilroy for putting this show together and for the fighters for taking this fight. A fight like this can't happen without both camps taking part and agreeing to it. They have, and it's on. Nothing left to do it but to, but to fight. Winner take all for $25,000, Scotty. We got to talk about that a little later. Right now, we wait for the bell and round one. Tony Badia in the black without a stripe. Manny Sobral with his name on the belt and a white stripe on his trunks. And uh, they're going at it, ladies and gentlemen. Sobral a little busier to start. Right hand to the body by Sobral, ducks under a jab, gets behind Badia, and spins him into the ropes. Once again, the left jab by Sobral. 
Yeah, Manny has definitely started a little bit quicker. He started quicker, bobbing and weaving, going ahead and throwing a, little, a few really hard shots, uh, trying to establish, establish himself in the fight early. A pretty good right hand uppercut at, on the break. And uh, the, the fundamentals of Manny Sobro may tell the story early. You know, they both box very well. They both can punch. They're both strong fighters. But uh, the one thing is that these, this is like two cars on a head-on collision. I feel that the indicative factor in this fight is the one who has the best bumper. The car who has the best bumpers might win this fight. Two left hooks by Sobro. One lands and the other doesn't. Padilla hasn't found a range yet with the jab. I've never seen Badia in a bad fight. Well, he's a very exciting fighter, and Manny is, has never been in a, in a snoozer either. It's such a wonderful thing when you see athletes at this stage of their careers in such a tremendously uh, close fight. Very close odds in this one. Did that right hand land, Scotty, or did it land on Badia's glove? Uh, it might have been, it might have been just a bit of a, a slider. May not have landed too flush. Good left hook by Badia, good right hand by Sobra. John, this is shaping up to be one heck of a battle. It really does. There's not much in the first round. Uh, Sobra a little quicker with the hands, a little busier, but not much. What's happening in this fight is what I love to see in some of the super fights. With this fight, sometimes in super fights, in large fights, both fighters give each other too much respect. That's not happening. This is being, this is really turning into, into an interesting battle. Well, each of these men, and I've talked to both of them often in the last couple of days, uh, each of these men really is confident. They both believe they can win. With $25,000 to the winner and nothing to the loser, if you don't believe you can win, you don't take the fight, Scotty. That is true. <laughs> that is true, John. <laughs> Round one comes to a conclusion. Manny Sobro uh, comfortably back to his corner. And already on the stool across the ring is uh, Tony Badia. And he's hearing from his trainer and yours, Jerome Coffey. A little uh, flashback to round one. And uh, again, a, it, a lot of activity by Sobro with none of those punches, it seemed to me. Scott Olson landed cleanly. Nothing too clean, but I, I feel that Manny's strength showed there in the last round. He started to establish a bit of a strength factor. He started to kick in. and uh, But Padilla came back and landed a few quality shots of his own. And uh, uh, but nothing of real big consequence in that last round. It's always impressed me to watch Manny Sobral in the corner between rounds because he, his focus, his concentration on the words of trainer Nelson Kitchen is astonishing. Both very intelligent fighters, and they both have uh, uh, very good, very good quality trainers. And with Badia having Jerome Coffey in, in in the corner with him, that's definitely an asset. Nelson Kitchen has done a great job with Manny Sobral. And they both listen to their instructions. Once again, uh, a lot of uh, flurry of activity and uh, not much happening uh, in terms of actual punches landing. And he's trying to establish his jab now. But he's moving side to side, not being a stationary target right in front of him. He Manny. took a pretty good right hand as he moved in. It didn't move him, but it was a pretty good shot. He sure did, and Tony Badia really... Uh, and another right hand by Badia. Tony Badia has found a bit of a home for the right hand early. Good shot to the body, a left hand to the body by Sobro. Sobro landed a beautiful uh, left uppercut in that exchange and it picked the head up of Badia. That may be a, a punch that, that Manny Sobro will be using uh, with effectiveness. There's a lot at stake in this fight, isn't there, John? It's an amazing thing that, that fighters would take a crossroads fight like this 
and each of them has got a chance to move on, but only one of them is going to go very quickly, Scotty, after this. Yeah, the, the, the winner of this fight is definitely going to move on to some very large things in the future. But the loser, I don't think, is going to be, uh, uh, in fact, the loser at all. I believe they both win in this fight, of course not financially, but the loser of this fight, I think, will still be a viable factor in their respective division. Good left hand underneath by Badia. Sobral comes forward, but a beautiful left hand underneath by Tony Badia. Well, Manny uh, was able to take a pretty good shot there. Uh, Badia landed a couple quality shots, and uh, Manny Sobral actually took them and is coming back now. That shot looked like it landed to the body, but it was taken mostly on the elbow of Tony Badia. Same apply to both of those punches, left hook blocked by Badia. What's happening, Manny Sobro is, is committing himself, being the aggressor coming forward. He has started initiating the punches. Badia is waiting, sitting back, trying to be defensively minded, but trying to crack Manny on his way in with a big right hand and a left hook to follow. And he's being a little bit successful this round at it, John. It's a, it's an interesting fight. It's a, a question of styles and not too much respect, as you say. They don't like each other at all. They're both being warned for uh, a little hassle after the bell, Scotty. That happens uh, quite often. It's not such a big deal, really. No, it's a, it, it means these both fighters want it. They, they go ahead and they stare each other down. I've done that in numerous fights before, and it, it gives a little bit of entertainment value for the fans watching as well. And both fighters, they, they, they want to go to work. And a pretty good, uh, just a little short with a right hand by Badia that looked better at first than, than as we've just seen it. Uh, another flashback to round two, and uh, pretty good left hook by Badia, another left hook. And this is just at the end of the round, and these guys were angry at each other, which is not a bad thing for guys as long as we're not in the middle. The, uh, there's a, a little marking around Badia's eye, not cut yet, but, but puffy. And uh, will that be a factor? Who knows? He has a history of cutting in the eyebrow, doesn't he, Scotty? Yeah, both fighters have had a history of cutting over the eyes, and hopefully that doesn't become a, a factor in this fight. I'd hate to see a fight like this get uh, get stopped because due, due to a cut. Uh, both fighters deserve to have this to go uh, a lot of rounds and to both put on great performances. Tell me about the, the kidney punching. Sobrell does it. It's experience. He he gets uh, but he exposed and whacks him in the kidneys. I've seen a lot of fighters do it. What's the effect of it? Well, it can kind of slow you down in the later rounds. That's for sure. You're hitting a vital organ when you're hitting the kidneys or the liver, sometimes the heart for that matter. But uh, uh, Badia was getting a little bit red on, on, his, on the sides of his body, which means that Sobral was getting in some of those shots. That's a pretty good shot to the midriff by Manny Sobral. And a right, the big left hand uh, against Tony Badia. I think that shot just got Badia's attention, John. Yeah, I think so too. Looked for a second that uh, Badia's right hand was going to get home, but it did not. Uh, Sobral blocked it with his with his own glove. They're exchanging some very good blows here, but I, I really feel uh, Sobral's getting the best of it right now, John. That's the feeling I have too, Scotty. That. Uh, Sobral landing cleaner punches, good right hand high on the head. And those are the kind of shots that land on the eye like that. That could open a cut for Badia. Tony's in a little trouble. Uh, the experience of Manny Sobral certainly is showing right at this moment. One factor that's very important here, John, is that Tony Badia is, has been accustomed to seesaw battles. He's been back and forth when things didn't go his way. He sometimes come back and put on excellent performances. Uh, so he's, this is uh, going through adversity in fights he's sort of been accustomed to. And I'm not so sure Manny has had some, some really quality fights. Manny just took two good shots, an uppercut and a straight right hand. 
This is a war. What a fight, John. Another right hand by, by Badia. Somebody is uh, creating a little problem in the corner for uh, for Jerome Coffey. Jerome is uh, getting a, a little uh, intense, and I think a spokesman for the uh, Edmonton Boxing and Wrestling Commission is uh, kind of cautioning him. I hope that's not the case. I've always thought that was that this rule against coaching from the corner is vastly overdone. I think. I I believe so. I think that the coaches should be able, to, the trainers should be able to yell whatever they want. Uh, I mean, what's it going to do? All you're really doing is telling the other fighter what, what your, your fighter is going to do. And uh, it does nothing. It doesn't bother the crowd. There's no noise pollution there. That was a good uppercut by, uh, by Tony Badia. But what a, what a wonderful round that was. I'm not sure who I'd give that one to. It was a seesaw kind of a, of, of a round. Well, we've come to the end of, uh, of three of them. Uh, Manny Sobro cut inside his mouth, as you can see, as the, uh, the mouthpiece just put back in he's up on his feet ready to go and uh, Tony Badia enjoying a couple of extra seconds rest and Sobro missed the right hand and took a right hand in exchange yeah Sobral's actually his nose was bleeding John is uh, he must have got clocked on the nose a little bit hard and uh, and he just took a big left hook Manny Sobral took the biggest punch of the fight and yeah, stood there and, and, and took it very well. That that's an attest. Uh, that, that is a tribute to his to both of these fighters' conditioning. Manny wouldn't have taken that shot if he wasn't in tremendous no. condition. And we've all heard the story. It's generated by Manny uh, by Tony Badia's camp that uh, Manny Sobral can't take a punch. Well, you're not going to prove it based on what's happening in this uh, in this fight. No. Uh, it help, when, when it's a winner take all, you're going to take all the punches you need to. <laughs> I know I would be. But Badia showing some poise, as you say, under pressure. He kind of draws back within himself and then fires back with something. He's just taken three left jabs and comes back with a couple of his own. And Badia takes a right hand and goes in and ties up Sobro. It's a pretty good scrap. Each of them in black trunks. Manny Sobro has the white stripe. Tony Badia's black trunks are black. His name, Tony, is visible on the leg. And, of course, Manny's name is visible on the belt line as he moves forward toward the camera. Manny has been a little bit susceptible to the right hand like he was there. Again, he took the right hand. His left hand is dropping a little bit before, while he's throwing the jab. He throws the jab, brings it down a little bit too low. Him, leaving him a bit susceptible. He's going to have to keep that up to uh, to block if he wants uh, to get into the later rounds in this one. And you, and you wonder when, if the right hand starts to, to take effect because uh, the mortar starts to crumble. I don't care how good your chin or how good your conditioning. That's a good point, John. Very good point. Badia just took a big right hand and didn't show much. This fight is living up to all the expectations. It's a, it's a wonderful event. And it is good old our side against mean old their side in the eyes of the crowd, both these fine young men. But you can hear the chant, Tony, 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 from the Edmonton fans, the Edmonton public. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of fans are cheering for, for Tony Badia, that's for sure. He has a good following here in Edmonton. But uh, that probably means that just the fans of, of Manny Sobral, which he does have some, they're not yelling too hard. And Sobral was just hurt with that shot. He was hurt. His, his, his knees buckled, and he stepped forward and held on. And uh, we do know that Badia's got power. Can he do it with one shot? Probably not. And uh, Sobral has been a great fighter. He doesn't get hit with many combinations. But he's been wobbled in this fight now. Jerry Gilroy, the, the promoter, the manager of Manny Sobral, sitting next to us. He may be the most intense man in the building, and he's done a very good job of not letting his, uh, his feelings show. I thought I had some tension when Rupert Thomas was fighting. Jerry Gilroy, he's uh, really being uh, quite composed at this point for, for the pressure he's probably feeling. 
just a, a little nick on the nose of Tony Padilla. And Manny Sobral, as you say, is bleeding slightly from the nose. And that was a pretty good right-hand uppercut that was landed by Badia. And we're uh, in a situation where it's hard to say who's winning this fight. And uh, as we head to, I guess, round four, time flies when you're having fun, Scotty. <laughs> Here goes. Round five, that's where I can't even count. Tell me who's winning the fight, my friend. I have it fairly even, but of course, Tony Badia, I, I believe, um, did enough in that round to, to win that one. But uh, each round has been very competitive, and neither really favoring e either fighter. Badia's right hand lands again, and then Badia, and then uh, Sobral comes back with three jabs. It's the old story. It's the power against the, the frequency, Scotty. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for the judges to score this one. Very difficult. I'm having a hard time. I've been in the boxing game for 15 years. You've been in the boxing game for about 50. So, yeah. Well, what a nice man you are. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I've certainly enjoyed being around the game, as you know. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the reasons you have these brave, tough, well-conditioned athletes. And uh, they're fighting with their hearts as much as with their bodies. It's wonderful. Well, both fighters are, are starting to show a little bit of wear and tear. Um, you know, Manny went back after that last round. He was bleeding from the nose, and he, he wanted to try to come back harder in this in this round. And Medea's throwing some really hard shots, but he has a little bit of redness over his eyes as well. And Medea uh, just landed a right-hand uppercut as Sobro came in. But uh, there's, there's no territory in this fight. Uh, both guys are right hand to the body by Sobral, a left hand to the body by Badia as uh, they move forward. And the referee, Del Smart, uh, Don Smart, suggests uh, that uh, the, the two fighters should watch their heads. But he is better defensively than I've seen him. He, they both carry uh, very, very exceptionally good skills. Uh, and they both do craft. And uh, uh, whoever lands the best shots in, in, a, in a series of punches may be the one who wins this fight. Uh, it's a very, very even fight all the way around. Uh, but for Manny Sobra, he still is dropping that left hand a little bit, and he's getting hit with the right hand. For getting hit with the right hand, keep the left hand up. And uh, sure enough, Badia is going ahead and throwing the right hand. He's landing it with effectiveness. And Badia did a good job there getting down below the punches of, of Sobro. And that's hard for a tired fighter to do. So Tony's still got some energy. Yeah, I don't think conditioning will be a factor in this fight at all. They're both in top, top condition. They both trained well. They're both at a peak for this. They really peaked for this. and. Uh, uh, it's really going to really come down to whoever's landing the, the better shots and more effective shots. But I think we still have quite a bit of fighting left to figure that out. And they're still doing some tugging and hauling on the inside. It's a, it's a at times, Scotty, uh, a war of strength. Yeah, I think uh, when these fighters are on the inside, there's a little bit of muscling going around, going on, and uh, neither fighter wants to give an inch. But... I think uh, in the last couple of rounds, Manny Sobra has opted to d use, the, use the ring a little bit more, stay on the outside a little bit more. When he charges in, though, he's keeping his left hand down low, and he's being susceptible to a, a few counter punches by Tony Badia. Um, so he's, if you're on the outside, why not wait for Tony Badia to commit and counter him back? But, uh, um, you know, I'm sure... Uh, Sobral's corner will go ahead and, and, and figure that one out. A perfect uh, indication as we look into the replay of uh, exactly what uh, what happened. There was a lot of tugging and hauling and both fighters uh, showing exceptional respect to the other. Once again, uh, awkward moves in the, in the center of the ring. And, and here we have Manny Sobral starting this round by coming forward. Yeah, and we're here for round six. Uh, Badia is moving backwards ever so slightly, takes a jab, takes another jab, and then steps two jabs of his own. I also noticed that Manny is sort of moving into Tony Badia's right hand. That may be one of the factors why it's been a bit effective. Uh, 
then he may, may be better off going slipping over to his right, which would take some of the power away from Padilla's right hand. He took a, Padilla took a shot high in the head, and it might have hurt him a little bit. to think, John, that some of my fights were exciting to watch, but this has to be the best fight Edmonton has seen in a lot of years. Uh, I don't know, Scott, I've seen you in some great ones. This is a great fight because of the quality of the fighters and the fact that there's a strong local connection with both of them. Good uppercut landed by Badia in the middle of the ring. That may have opened a cut over Badia's eye. There's a little bit of blood on the bridge of Badia's nose. There was earlier, uh, Scotty, blood on the nose. It may not have changed. May uh, it may not have changed, but we'll find out in uh, in a few seconds. Now Tony's saying he was butted. He's angry. He's probably been cut. You're right. And he's been uh, well, I, badly I really, cut now. I really think he is badly cut over cut, the right yeah, eye. Yeah, the eye's cut badly now. Like all outstanding fighters, Manny Sobral is a great front runner. I don't know if that was a headbutt. I don't think so either. A, a right uppercut he wants from the Manny doctor Sobral. to look. Um, Tony has called for the doctor, and uh, it's a severe cut. The, the picture shows clearly it's a severe cut. Um, but a fight of this magnitude, what what should happen is the doctor should let it continue give the corner an opportunity to close it up in between rounds. Yeah, it uh, doesn't look like it. The doctor, if you can read the facial expression, uh, it's not a... Uh, yeah. It's a bad cut. Uh, high over the eyebrow. And Tony's... Uh, Tony's discouraged now. I mean, bad cuts do that. Scott, you uh, you weren't cut, haven't been cut in your pro career, but uh, Sobro has momentum on his side now. When you cut a fi another fighter, when you see another fighter getting cut, it, it gives you an extra couple rounds of energy, and, and uh, Sobro is really starting to put on the pressure to, on the deal right now. Tony... Uh, is very discouraged right at the moment. And after this round, Badia's corner is going to have a little bit of work to do on that eye. Yes. And I believe it was a punch, as you do, Scotty, that opened it. And we can certainly hope that's the case. I thought it was an uppercut from, from Manny Sobro. But unfortunately for fortunately for Badia, the, the cut is high over his eye and it's not on his eyelid, causing it to impair his vision too severely. And the fans are going slightly wild here at the Mayfield Convention Center. And uh, you get a, a good look at the cut. Now, how much is in the eye? What vision does Badia have? We'll know better. It's, uh, it's really quite a slice, but it may not be deep, Scott. It's quite a slice there, John. It really is quite a slice, but I think that he has, he also has a slight nick on the side of his eye. Neither one are really causing it to be a factor in this fight. And for this fight to be stopped because of a little nick, this is a professional fight. They're bound to get cut every once in a while. It was a butt. It was. It was a butt. And uh, that you can see the butt happen on the, on the replay. It was a butt. It looked like Badia was, was the one going forward at that time. He was moving forward and, and Sobro's head came up and it was an accidental butt. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And that would explain why Tony reacted the way he did. He reacted like he was in pain rather rather than having been punched. He was shocked by by the pain of the of the collision. Yes, John, I've, I've been in there quite a number of times. Tremendous right hand with Sobral right down. right hand to the chin. Uh, Padilla, Sobral is uh, um, now uh, we're back in the fight. <laughs> That was tremendous conditioning Good. by Manny Sobro. He got right back yep. up. And, uh, and they're both going to fight, guys. It was as 
good a right hand as I've ever seen a professional at this weight deliver in this town, Scotty. And the crowd chant, the crowd chants Tony. Tony. And he wobbled him with another right hand, and another right hand. Sobro is seriously hurt. Wonderful condition. He's up. His, his eyes are not clear as he moves forward. He is not in very good shape. He's getting a long time from Bell Smart. There's One more knockdown and we're done, folks. There's a lot of time left remaining this round, too. There has to be a minute and a half left, Scotty, minimum. The heart of Manny Sobro, right here for everybody to see it. He has nothing left in his, in his punches or in his legs. Manny is showing tremendous heart staying up for these really guys. He is. He took another right hand uppercut. He take another right hand and another right hand and another. This, uh, this is getting to be difficult to, to watch. Uh, now it's Padilla with incredible confidence. This has been a remarkable fight. If Manny Sober is able to weather this storm, uh, Manny, uh, Tony Padilla may be in a bit of an oxygen deck. It's, uh, it's an impossible fight to, to score at this point. Uh, it's, a, it's a great fight. A wonderful example of two brave men. Padilla has blood on his face, and uh, Sobral is in pain, and in, in desperate straight still has no legs. Sobral is bouncing a little bit more. What tremendous conditioning by both fighters. I believe Tony Padilla may have punched himself out a little I bit thought, in that last round. I thought he punched himself out. We will see it again, but this is uh, an incredible fight. Um, there's enough water on uh, Manny Sobro. Tony Badia's eye is not dripping blood at the moment, and they just poured water on it. So the work has been done on the eye. Um, he, he's, uh, he's got some vision in the eye, clearly. Sobro doesn't look good. He's cut, too, in his, maybe in his, uh, his hairline, but not near the eye. He's bleeding down the side. I think he may be uh, cut high on the back of his head, yeah. bleeding down the side of his neck there. Or in the ear, maybe. But uh, an incredible right hand put him down. And uh, so that's got to be a three-point round for Badia. And Sobro had won the previous two rounds. And uh, this, is, uh, this is crazy. Both corners are wiping up the, the repair work. They splash the cold water on both fighters just to try to wake them up. But Niagara Falls in each corner. <laughs> this is a fight, John. Tony is a little bit tired right now, and Manny Sobro has weathered the storm. And he knows and what he has to do. What an interesting fight. this round assuming we've got something after this round we'll get a chance to talk about punching yourself out because i'm sure you've done it Scotty. i sure have john and it's a pretty scary feeling you have to rely on your defensive abilities for a while and uh, what what tony pep is or i'm sorry what tony badia is doing is sitting down blocking some shots try not to over overdo it or overdo it by punching too much pacing himself but so far looks like he's pretty much fully recovered from that last round but he does know he can be hurt. That's the thing that he wasn't sure of before. Yeah, we now know that Tony Badia can get Manny into some serious trouble. Although early in the fight, I saw Manny Sobal hurt Tony Badia. Yes, and that not shot to the body hurt Badia. Yeah. And when you're tired, it's those body shots that really, really take its toll at that, at that time. This is the question that I know Robin Brownlee of the Edmonton Journal has mentioned all week long. What about the fact that Badia runs out of gas late in fights? He has done it. You've seen him do it. 
Well, if he wasn't tired after that last exchange, there's something wrong. You know, after that last round, he should have been dead tired. He came, now he's pacing himself, and we're going to see if uh, Manny Sobral can work himself back into this fight. Manny, come, Manny just landed a pretty good right hand, and he's been scoring with the jab. Very good right hand, but yeah, maybe he's playing a little bit of possum, but such a bad round in the round before this last one came back and, and mounted a good offense uh, what a great performance by both guys and see as we look there's a pretty good right hand by Badia and uh, Sobral uh, is busier in the round wins the round I think rather clearly but uh, but right at the moment uh, with Sobral having been knocked down twice that's normally classed as a three point, point round I believe that gives the Badia a point or two to work with as we go into the final three rounds of, the, of this fight. These are the championship rounds, John. Tony's a tired puppy. Badia is being uh, outsmarted at the moment. The, the, the quicker feet of, uh, of Manny Sobral are making a big difference. They're not wrestling quite the same way they did, Scotty. They're quite content to lean into that clinch now. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit fatigued, but they still have a, a, quite a high work rate. And right now, uh, I think Manny Sobral is just trying to maintain maintain the, the fight, maintain his uh, little bit of aggression. He landed a good right hand, came back with a hook. Uh, a little bit more effective with the right hand. A good right hand by Sobral. And then a punch from behind as the referee was breaking him. It's a fight. I get the feeling in this case that, so, that Badia is uh, playing just a little possum. He'd like to get... So we're all walking in carelessly. What Padilla is doing, which he did the last round, was he, he did uh, he didn't do much for the early part of, of the for, of, of the round, but he came on a little bit strong. He's trying to steal the round at the end, and uh, that's what some of the best fighters, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Thomas Hearns, they they all did that. And Padilla, I think, is going to try to steal this round right at the end with a good flurry of punches. But the intensity is overwhelming. Now they're slipping around in there because the ring is very damp. A lot of water on the canvas, John. A lot of water. Yeah, absolutely. That can cause a lot of trouble. Put you out of position to get hit with a big shot. Big right hand by Manny Sobral in the corner right above us. Manny does look like he's much fresher at the moment. Yeah, Manny Sobral does look very fresh. Actually, even though he's been down twice, uh, Tony Padilla looks like he's a little bit the worse for wear. He, but uh, Sobral just took a pretty good right hand and, and uh, labored to, to answer back with a hook. What a treat for Edmonton. Boxing big, right, fans. big right hand again by... Manny Sobral. <laughs> Left hook by Badia, and once again, B Badia claims he was butted as Sobral lunged into the corner. Sobral is, is jumping in with the left hook, uh, and he's leaving himself a little bit vulnerable for a counterpunch from Badia still. But he may have clashed a little bit of a headbutt there, but it wasn't anything of significance. But Tony Badia, being the consummate professional he is, he just went and reminded the referee, listen, this is a fight, the guy might be headbutting me a little bit, just remember to take a look. But this is nine rounds complete. We look into the corner of uh, Tony Badia, and his nose is cut, his eye is cut badly above and, and uh, noticeably below. Manny Sobral doesn't look badly marked at all, but he's been on the canvas twice. Yeah, Tony Badia looks a little bit more the worse for wear, that's for sure. Tony looks very cautious, very deliberate, and uh, he's not doing anything easily. 
got him. The last two rounds may have helped uh, uh, get, get Sobral back into this fight. Yes, I believe that the fight is as close to even as a fight can be when one guy's been on the canvas twice in the same round. Well, you can be sure, John, that in both of the corners, the trainers really implore their fighters to go to work. This is the last three rounds of the fight. Go for it. Go ahead and do your job. This is for all the money. That's why you're here, guys. And uh, somebody's got to say $25,000 about this point, don't they? Yeah. I mean, you can say all you want about pride, but to do all this work and take this punishment for, for less than training expenses, that's pretty serious stuff. Right at the moment, Manny Sobral's hurt. Now he comes off fighting with his experience and his heart, but he took a big right hand and was rocked back into the rope. He landed a hot... A, he missed with two right hands that looked like they landed, but they didn't. That one did. And Manny Sobral just uh, shot a real nice short right hand that caught Padilla right on, right on the cheekbone. It was a very good shot. Another right hand to the chin. It uh, didn't land with great power, but was very precise by Sobral. Padilla once again looks like he's ready to throw the right hand. He, he threw it with a little more purpose. Right now, John, both fighters are into their second wins. And uh, you see the last two rounds have both be picking up their momentum and really going for both. But it's interesting that now, rather than wrestle in the trenches, they, they touch and back away. They're both too tired for this, this pointless movement. Oh, Padilla just took a big right hand. Hardest punch of the fight by Manny Sobral. Another big right hand. Padilla is uh, in his own corner in some trouble. The uh, focus of Manny Sobral is incredible. He took a right hand. Hard to pick a winner in this round, John. It really is. Shot to the body. I think it was blocked by the, by the glove, but it didn't look like it. Very good right hand to the body. Those body shots late in a the fight, they really take their toll, and uh, they, they, they're more effective later on when you're already tired. But this body language, Scotty, is really discouraging. I, I, I mean, if, if I'm a judge looking at this fight, I see Badia as a beaten fighter just by the way he carries himself. And it doesn't necessarily reflect what's happening with the punches. But his posture is, is gone, his hands are down, his mouth is open, he looks like he, he's very ill. This looks like the way he, he has been in some previous fights. Oh, a tremendous right hand at the belt by right Manny Sobral. And, and at the moment, I've got to say that Manny Sobral's in charge of the fight. Yes, I believe that, and that really hurt Tony Badia. That was a tremendous right hand by, by Manny Sobral. Beautiful shot, timed it perfectly, and... Uh, but yeah, so he was asking for it with his hand down so low. He's got to keep that hand up if he wants to uh, stay in this fight. He's a, it's a great fight. Now the only thing that frustrates me is uh, as you watch Badia, you see a fighter who's not throwing punches. He's slapping with them. He's pawing with them. And uh, Sobral is in charge at this moment. You know, John, uh, just when I thought that was a tremendous right hand, the fact of the matter is that right hand didn't land, but it may have looked to the judges on this side. I thought it landed. Prior to seeing the, pre the, the replay right there, the judges may have thought that landed. But this is the point that we're making, Scotty. Badia looks like he's getting hit. Here we get another look at this right hand, and uh, it did miss. It clearly missed, and, uh, and the uppercut missed. And Tony's legs buckled to make it look like yeah. the effect was well, that he, he landed he it. Was, he was the getting out of the way of a punch and uh, he just took a right hand it did land that time he is not prepared to go to war in the body he was butted again um, now they're taking a point from manny sobral in the 10th round of a war um, 
it's a uh, very serious business the budding and uh, there there have been several I, i'm happy that del smart noticed the don smart noticed that the first one was a butt and he's telling Sobral, stay in the corner don't come over here and it's been a it was a battle we knew it would be because these camps don't like each other much there have been some unpleasant things said by both sides yeah that was that was a bit of a head but but it was unintentional uh Manny Sobral was just trying to force the action but, but careless butts unintentional or not are penalized as you know and uh, Tony is in great pain um, the fight is over um, this is uh, going to be one of those that nobody uh, that nobody will ever be happy with the referee's got a decision to make um, they're going to call it uh, they go to the cards don't they they go to the cards let's go to the monitor and we get a look um, there's a butt there's a clear butt Scotty you can see it completely unintentional but it yeah, was a butt, a clear butt right, on, right on the eye right on the, the, the wound on the damaged eye and uh, Padilla in great pain and, um, Jim Monsis will be talking to we certainly want Jim to talk to the referee when he gets a chance and uh, there are fighters to talk to trainers to talk to uh, this has been quite an event uh, Tony Badia down on his haunches near his corner talking to Jerome Coffey um, nobody can tell what's going through the, the mind of the fighter um, the belt is in the ring uh, does that mean that uh, Tony gets it uh, while sitting know. down does it mean that Manny Sobral gets it the, the rules I believe are that uh, at this stage of the fight you go to the cards on an accidental butt and that's the answer from Jim Jerome you go to the cards on an accidental butt and Tony Badia um, it's gonna he lost a point Manny Sobral lost one point that we know about I believe it had to be a three-point round when he was down twice which means that he had to dominate the other ten rounds of this fight to uh, to get a decision I see that I see it that way too John uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see how the judges uh, saw some of those other rounds uh, beside the point that the time where Manny Sobral lost the point in when he was knocked down you see the uh, the poignant picture the moving picture of uh, Manny Sobral smiling grimly but smiling uh, Tony Padilla still down on his haunches unable to get up unwilling to get up now he stands um, he's, uh, he's he's a young man in pain but uh, if anything this fight calls for a rematch this is the this is the kind of fight that any American network would be proud to show and give him twenty five thousand dollars a piece yes <laughs> not much science but lots of heart lots of fire lots of power as you called it early Scott Olson you said it would be a, a, a question of back and forth trends in the fight and that's what happened I thought the Sobral was in control early I thought Badia came on a little bit then Badia got cut then Badia put Sobral down then Sobral came back and dominated then Sobral lost a point for what seemed to be an accidental butt but clearly not the first accidental butt of the fight a fight of this magnitude you're going to have both fighters trying to force the action and clash of heads are inevitable it's going to happen but I, I know that it was completely and, unintentional and Sobral stands above us with giving the thumbs up sign does that mean that he got the decision does that mean he's happy with his performance I don't know that anybody's even seen the cards yet but uh, we, we see as we look off to our left to the opposite of uh, to our right I'm sorry to the opposite of Badia's corner we see some members of the Edmonton Boxing and Wrestling Commission in serious conversation heated no but intense serious conversation Jerome Coffey who rarely looks grim he has a, he has this talent for looking happy in the most difficult circumstances he looks grim in that ring well, there's a lot of tension up there now. There's a lot at stake. I'm not so sure that uh, 
it, there's a possibility that Tony may have uh, hurt a bit of, a, of an orbital bone. Sometimes that can happen when, when you land on the ridge. Just, uh, just well, you over, know that. You, you, you suffered severe eye damage yourself, so uh, nothing that went on in the ring is unfamiliar to you. Uh, the referee, a very nice man named uh, Don Smart, is uh, got he's covered in blood on his on his refereeing jersey. Uh, there's no way at this moment to do anything but guess. If uh, if it's hockey these days in this town, you call it speculation. But all we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is guessing. There is no way to tell what goes on. Well, Here, either way this decision goes, John, both fighters should be applauded for the tremendous performance that they, they displayed tonight. Scott, I have to remind you of a statement you made over dinner before the fight. You said what would be terrible is for somebody to win this fight, lose the decision, and get less than training expenses. $25,000 winner take all. And we're very close to that. Each fighter has got a legitimate reason to complain. You know, it, I, <laughs> you're darn right, John. Who knows what this is going to do? Let's find out. The match was stopped at 47 seconds of the 11th round due to an accidental butt, which did not permit Padilla to continue. Under the rules, the bout is awarded to the boxer ahead on points on the scorecards. Judge Ken Newman scores at 97-92. Judge Ken Run scores at 97-92. Judge Bill Warwick scores at 97-92. The winner by technical decision and still Canadian champion, Manny Sobro. You lose four points that we know about and win by five. Somebody saw a different fight than I saw. Well, you, you know what? E either way. I, I think that uh, Batia will have a chance to regain regain a, a chance at this again because th this fight is is deserving of a rematch. It was that high that high profile and that good of a fight. Well, we're going to have to wait a minute because uh, there's pandemonium in the ring. There's a, a lot of noise, a lot of people. I don't know what some of them are doing in there, but uh, that's all right. Um, we will see if we can find. James Monsis. James, if you can hear me, over to you. Canadian junior middleweight champion, Manny Sobral. Manny, you uh, fought a guy that you knew a lot about tonight. Uh, I think it's safe to say it was an absolute war. It was a war, but I felt I was in control the whole fight. Um, I had him where I wanted him. Right at the 10th round, I heard him bad, right over in that corner. Hit him with the right hand, left hook to the body. I knew he was hurt. It was only a matter of time the last, those last two rounds because I always finish really strong. So that's my forte. He uh, he caught me with the right hand. I went over on my ankle. I believe in the sixth, was it? Seventh. Seventh round. Went over my ankle. I didn't have total stability. So, you know, I was in a bit of trouble there. But I survived it. I learned from that fight. So, hey, cut, bring him on. I think, uh, I think your uh, manager here... Uh... Mr. Jerry Gilroy was probably on his toes as well. Uh, Jerry, senior guy, go down twice in the seventh, but he came back. He was in tremendous shape. He came back very strong, actually. I was very surprised uh, to prove what a great fighter he is. He did come up. He definitely was in control from then on and would have been a knockout had it gone on. Manny, uh, I, got, I got one more question to ask you here, Manny, before we let you go. Uh, it's a big win. It ends on a, on a technical decision. Uh, would you consider going into the ring one more time to settle this fair and square? Why not? Well, I think it was settled fair and square right here because in the 10th round I had him hurt bad. He was looking for a way out because he's the guy that always grabs the back of my head and he's pulling me toward me. Hey, so he's head biting me. He's looking for a way out. That's as far as I see it. I knew he was tiring. The 11th, 12th round are always my hardest. He knows that. So in the back of his mind, he knew he was going to get it. So he just looked for a way out just like Galata does when he hits low. A lot of uh, animosity between the two of you after this fight. Uh, do you still feel that animosity? You guys are still swearing at each other. I don't feel any animosity because I felt I won that fight quite quite easily. Sure, he hit me in the seventh round, but everyone gets caught. It's the true champions that get up and fight back and fight back harder because I won the eighth, ninth round and the tenth round big, I thought. So 
I mean, that knockdown was just a surprise knockdown. I went over on my ankle. <laughs> Actually, Anna probably have to ice my ankle. If anything, I don't think I have too many marks on my face. So I'm going to continue on from this and, and fight better, more experienced guys. That's all there is to it. All right, Manny, thank you very much. Congratulations. I now want to head over and see if I can uh, get a hold of Jerome Coffey. Tony, just one second here, if we can get Tony Padilla to come, come over and talk to us here. Tony, it was uh, what we talked about before, a real war. Uh, how did you see the fight? I seen the fight was more close than the referee put on, on their cards. He was down, he was hurt. The referee should have stopped him that time. All his shots, he was, he was slugging all night long. What kind of teacher is that? What kind of teacher is that? I didn't learn nothing from him. I teach him how to go down. He was down, he was hurt. The referee should have stopped him. Are you disappointed you didn't finish him off in the seventh? The, the referee could, should, should still stop him. He, he was hurt. The referee should have stopped him. He had battled me all night long. He was fighting dirty. Hey, what kind of teacher is that? Uh, well, thanks for your time, Tony, and uh, continued success in the future. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of anarchy in the ring here. Let's go back to ringside with uh, John and Scotty. Well, thank you very much, James Monsis. Difficult time to conduct an interview. A lot of noise, a lot of hard feelings all over the place. You heard it, Scotty, in uh, the simplest language. Tony Badia says that uh, he was head-butted all night long, that the referee should have stopped the fight. Manny Sobral says that Tony Badia was looking for a way out. They both say that uh, they think they won the fight. I think they should do it again. Let's do it again, John, and I, I'm not the one stepping in the ring doing it, but I feel that would be a tremendous battle one more time, and I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't even better than this one. I would love to talk to Jerome Coffey and some other people, but we just don't have time to do that. I just want to say thank you to a lot of people. My friend Scott Olson, you have taught me so much about this game and so much about class, and, and uh, you are a great uh, tribute to our community. I know you're going to fight in September. I hope the building's full. I hope we get a chance to watch these young men fight again very soon. And I want to say thank you to some people before we get out of here. I want to say thanks to Jim Jerome, who did a good job in the ring, as he always does. And uh, thanks to James Monsis, who jumped into the ring for us uh, between uh, bouts and got uh, some incisive quotes and some incisive comments. And uh, as always, thank you to Jerry Gilroy, who gave us an opportunity to do this and who provided an outstanding show for us. Let's do it quickly. Mario Lachowski of Edmonton defeated the Torrance Brown in a uh, six-round decision, first of four bouts on the night. Rupert Thomas, Scotty Olsen's fi fighter, won by knockout over Troy Roberts in a heavyweight slugfest. It was a war. Ron Pasek won a clear decision over Robbie Stoll in a junior middleweight eight-rounder. And in the main event, it was stopped at 47 seconds of the 11th round due to an accidental butt. And uh, Manny Sobral, who had been on the floor twice in the same round, the seventh round, won rather handily on the cards, 97-92 on all three cards. He retains the Canadian Championship. I'm John Short with my friend Scott Olson. I hope we do it again very soon for you and for us right here on Shaw. Thanks again, everybody, and good night.